Um, we've been uh, speaking through this whole idea of gifting hope. And uh, what I want to speak about tonight is the idea of Christmas lights, right? So uh, uh, who has seen some Christmas lights? Okay, so you've seen some Christmas lights. There's some great lights around town. We've uh, uh, we found one street that was pretty cool. If you haven't seen uh, Balcones Club Drive yet, um, they have some fantastic Christmas light, lights in town. But there's there's a lot of lights around around Christmas, right? Everybody's got their Christmas lights out, and there's all kinds of lights around. What you probably don't know is that one of the gospel writers, one of the four individuals that wrote the story of Jesus, he actually also wrote about Jesus as the Christmas light. And we're going to look at that a little bit tonight uh, as we journey through this together. You all know the story, right? And I, th- that's always the thing about a Christmas service, is you come here knowing the story. You, you've got a vague idea of what I'm going to talk about. You might remember the, the um, if nothing else, you remember the nativity scene, right? We've all seen the nativity scene. We know what's involved in the nat- nativity scene, okay? So what should we expect here? We need some, uh, where's the kids, okay? We need some, what, what, do we, what do we need? We need some... Should there be some shepherds? I think there should be shepherds. What's missing from this one? We've got angels. We've got shepherds. I don't see anybody that looks wise to me. I think we need some wise men on this one, right? No wise men. There should be some wise men. Uh, I typically, for some reason, always think of a donkey when I think of it. They, I, I don't know why, but it feels like there should be a donkey. There's a cow-looking, dog-looking thing, which might be it. I'm not sure, but... You, 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 you think you know the story, right? And, and I'm pretty sure that you think that I can't tell you anything about the story you don't know. But here's a question which might just bowl you over, right? So here's the question, okay? Who was, other than Mary and Joseph, who do you think was the person that knew who Jesus was first? And I'll give you a hint. It wasn't a shepherd and it wasn't wise men, right? So who was the person to get it first. Who is the person that went first? Jesus is the Son of God. If you know the answer, don't tell, okay? But but I'm going to get back to this question in a little bit. We're going to get around to it because I'm pretty sure that Joseph and um, Mary, they were pretty proud parents, right? I saw this picture and it made me think about that. But, um, you know, they, they must have been pretty proud parents having, uh, you know, the Son of God as a son and all that. So uh, that had to be really cool. But when when the story is being told, when, when this idea of, of Christmas, this idea of God coming to dwell with us happens, this moment happens within the context of actually a very long time of waiting, a very long time of darkness, a very long time of hardship. Um, and actually, the, the nation Israel, if you, if you read the context, there's 39 books in the Old Testament. All 39 of them is waiting for this moment of the Messiah coming. It's like, a, it's like a great big dark tunnel, and Jesus is the light at the end of the tunnel. Jesus is the moment when they actually arrive, when the Messiah comes, when the, when the resolution comes, um, when the hope arrives on the scene, when what they've hoped for materializes. That's the moment when Jesus arrives on the scene. And I'm sure, as I would expect at a Christmas service, that you would expect me to tell the story most likely from either uh, Luke's vantage point or, you know, Mark's vantage point, because those two and then Matthew, those three actually tell us the story that we know, right? The shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the manger, that's the story. Well, one of the four people that tell the story actually tells the story more from this perspective. When John writes the story, John writes the story and he writes about Jesus coming as light. And um, in John chapter one is the portion of scripture that we're going to be dealing with tonight. And I want us just to read through it and just see how John tells the story. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. 
He himself was not the light. He came, he came only as a witness of the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John tells of no shepherds, no wise men, no star. He just tells of the life that came to make his dwelling with us, to make his home with us, and that Jesus came, and as verse 4 and 5 says, in him was life, and life was the light of all mankind. John tells us that Jesus came, and Jesus was indeed the light. Now I need to find the right switch here. There we go. Jesus was the light. So Jesus came, and Jesus came as the light of all of us, right? And he came as the light, but then John doesn't stop there. He actually goes on to say, and that's where we actually pick up the story and we answer the question, who is the first human being to respond to Jesus as the Son of God other than his parents? Well, the answer to the question is found in Luke chapter 1, verse 38 to 45, the angel just showed up, spoke to Mary, told Mary that she was going to be pregnant with the Son of God. Mary responds in verse 38 and says, I'm the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town on the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Okay, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she proclaimed, blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Who's the first person to respond to Jesus? An unborn baby inside of Elizabeth. That's the first person to get it. It's not because of the intellect, nor the understanding, nor their ability to get it. It was just purely because Jesus was who Jesus says he is, and the baby knew it and responded. I remember when um, Josh and Ethan was uh, little babies that were uh, still unborn in their mom's tummy. And I remember that she might have been uh, very um, um, well-rounded, very well-rounded and pregnant. I, 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 I remember Karen would actually balance a, a coffee cup on top of her belly, okay, which was a very convenient place to put down a coffee cup. But then a certain Josh would get excited about life and he would kick it off there, okay. But I, I, I remember I was a little, little jealous of her because I felt like she had all the time with our kid, right? Every time it was like I, I felt as a dad, I was missing out. So whenever I spent time with her, me and the belly had long conversations where I was speaking to them and I was like, hey, son, how is it in there? You know, are you having fun? Because I want to connect with it. And, and then sometimes they would respond to my voice or they would just respond to being uncomfortable sleeping in that position. And I tell myself they were responding to my voice. But I was excited about it because there was interaction. And what happens in this moment, the first human being to actually re respond to who Jesus is wasn't just a baby. It was an unborn baby that got it in the moment. The name of that unborn baby is John the Baptist. And actually, it's the same John that John wrote about. Now, don't get confused with all the Johns, right? Two different Johns. One John wrote and one John baptized, okay? But the, the John who wrote... <laughs> The John who wrote, who actually wrote 
about the John who baptized, okay? And it's the John who baptized who was inside of Elizabeth that was the first person before he was born to say that Jesus is Jesus, right? He got it, he responded to it. And John the Baptist, before he was born, got this. And this is what John speaks about when John writes about this John that has the same name as he has, right? So it's interesting that John writes more about John than all the other gospel writers. It's maybe because they have the same name. I don't know. But John writes about John the Baptist. And when he writes about him, he he says this in verse 5 to 9. He says, The light shines in darkness, and darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe he himself was not the light. So John comes along on the scene, and John was not the light, okay? So John came and John was not the light. Jesus came, Jesus was the light. John came, but he was not the light. He was just a witness of the light. Okay, you with me? Jesus is the light. John is not the light. Not that difficult, okay? So one John is writing about it and second John is baptizing about it, okay? He's not the light. He says that although Jesus was the light, John was not the light. What's the potential of a light bulb? The potential of a light bulb is it has the ability to be the light, but he wasn't the light. And I found it fascinating when I read this because here's the thing is when when Jesus writes about John, he actually later in the, uh, when John writes about John, sorry, when John writes about John, he actually later in John chapter five quotes Jesus saying this. He says, John was a lamp, John 5, 35, that burnt and gave light and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. So Jesus actually says this. He never says that John is the light, but he says John was burning like a light and he, you came because you wanted to see the light. He was a witness of the light, but he was never the light himself. See, what John the Baptist came and did for us was he pointed us towards the light. He gave us the ability, when I show you a light bulb, you think of light. Whether the light bulb is the light or isn't the light, it points to the light. And that's what John the Baptist actually did. It's interesting if you read John chapter one by the guy that wrote John, not John the Baptist. When John writes about it, John says this, he says, John came, John the Baptist has come so that through him, verse seven, through him all might believe. And I've often wondered about that. How is it that we all believe through John the Baptist? But then I realized John the Baptist made us aware of what we didn't have. See, because Jesus was the light, John was not the light. And if you read further on in 1 John, verse 9 and 10, then it says that Jesus came to the world and the world did not recognize him because we were in darkness and we are like John, not the light. But when John came along, John showed us what we were missing, that we were not light, that we were living in darkness because it says the world did not recognize him. In fact, if you read further, it says that we lived in darkness and we that's the realities. We were living in this darkness. The people that Jesus came to were existing in the space of darkness and Jesus was the light and John was the guy to say, hey guys, you need a light. You need the light. You need to go to the light. I am not the light but I know the light and it helped us realize what we didn't have, that we didn't have the light, that we weren't living in the light. John the Baptist helps us see that. John the Baptist helps us see that we were living in the darkness, that we were missing out on the light, which was Jesus. So how many lights on your Christmas tree? Maybe you've been sitting here and like I did when, I was in church many years ago. I would count the rafters, right? Or you would count something. Maybe you, are you done counting the lights behind me? Okay, what, what, what have you been counting today to keep yourself occupied, right? So if there's a Christmas tree and you see the Christmas tree, how many lights in the Christmas tree? We don't know. And why lights in the Christmas story? I've often wondered why all these lights? Well, every one of those lights actually points to the light, which is what came when Jesus came as the light, and he helped us see that we need the light. We're in need of the light of God 
to come in our lives, to come and show himself for who he is. If you, um, if you read the story of, of John the Baptist's birth, right? So you, you guys remember that he leaped when he saw Jesus, when he heard of Jesus inside of Elizabeth. Well, when he gets born, his dad, Zechariah, actually makes this statement in, in, in um, uh, Luke 1, towards the end, he says this in verse 78, he says, the, he says, and you, my little son, verse 76, you'll be called a prophet. This is what he says over John the Baptist. He says, you'll be a prophet of the most high God because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins because God's, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. So when Zachariah speaks to John, he says, listen, John, you're gonna be the one that will point people towards, that will show them towards the light that is shining, that is breaking like the morning sun. So um, uh, one of my boys had to do a, a, a school Break, break out, camp out at some point in time, and the dads had to go with them. And the area that we went to was um, was quite a de- de- you know quite a desert type climate, and it was it was really dry, but it was it was nice weather, and it's known for being a warm climate. And although it was winter, my assumption was that it won't be that that cold. Now, if you know us well, you'd know that I'm not much of a, a camper, right? I'm I'm more of a glamper at best, right? But everybody was camping, so we were going to camp. And um, yeah, he was five, so, you know, we did the whole thing. And, of course, Dad had to know everything. So I, I, I got someone else's tent, and I got, you know, a sleeping bag. And, you know, we went camping. So it was just one night. How bad could it be? Um, problem with the climate is it was very nice and toasty during the day, but it got really cold at night, okay? So during the night, I tried to keep him warm, and, you know, eventually I had all the clothes on that I had there. I had everything on that I could find, and I was shivering cold throughout the night. And it was one of those nights in my life that I couldn't wait for the dawn because I knew that when the sun came up, it would get warm again. But it was the coldest, darkest night you could imagine. And I remember at some point, I just couldn't, I mean, the tent wasn't helping at all. So I was sitting outside looking for a glimmer of hope. And at some point, I saw the light starting to come up in the distance. And I was so excited for the sun to come up. And that's kind of exactly what John the Baptist did. John the Baptist was the light breaking, saying, hey, the light is going to come. And I'm pretty sure that for most of us, this isn't our first Christmas. We've had many Christmases and sometimes in the traditions of everything and the lights and the presents, I've spoken to some of the kids and they're excited about tomorrow morning. I have no idea why they're excited about tomorrow morning, but I've been told that there's some excitement about tomorrow morning. And actually that excitement is great because that's the whole point of Jesus. The point of Jesus is for those who live in darkness, John the Baptist came and he said, don't worry about it. The light is going to come. You can be those waiting for the light. You can be one of those that's anticipating the light coming and, and shining in your life. You, you can anticipate it. And, and, and what's amazing about it is that John the Baptist comes and he shows us that we can see the light and that the light is on the way. But he's not the light, just like we are not the light. And I don't know about you, but in many ways, 2021 has not been the light. I don't know if it's just me, but there are many ways that it feels like this is not the light, right? This is not fun. This is hard work. And maybe you're in a space in your life where you feel like it's not the light. Well, can I tell you, Jesus came so that we might know the light, so that we can see the light. But the problem is that jumping through some religious hoops or just because you can be the light doesn't mean you are the light. Have you noticed in the Christmas story how it's all about the light? There's a star that is brighter than any of the other stars that the wise men follow. Have you read the story about the, the, the shepherds in the field? What they saw a great, suddenly there was a great light and a whole magnitude. Why the theme of light is throughout the entire nativity story? Because Jesus was the light. He was the breaking of dawn. He was the light at the end 
of the tunnel. And that is why I love Christmas lights, because for me, every Christmas light testifies of the fact that he is the light. Now, here's the interesting thing. Jesus was the light. John was very clearly not the light, and we all lived in darkness. But Jesus came so that we might become the light. Read with me, John chapter 8, verse 12. It says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in, in darkness, but will have the light of life. You have an opportunity to respond today and to follow him. And as we follow him, we don't just see the light. We actually become the light of day. I think I messed up the signs. I think that Jesus is the light. John was not the light. And yes, we all start out as not being the light. But if John chapter 8 is to believe, then when we follow him, we become the light ourselves. And now I need to be careful that I don't switch John on. Yay! We become the light. We don't have to stay in darkness. We don't have to just have the potential to be the light. And may this Christmas not just be another Christmas. May the Christmas lights that you see not be just another light. And may your Christmas experience not just be a religious exercise to say, hey, there is a light. But may your Christmas be one where you become the light, where you get to be the light. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light. One of the people in the early church um, wrote down something which they attributed to, to Thomas, um, one, of the, one of the disciples. Now, this isn't part of the Bible, but it, it, it's a saying that emerged out of it. And the saying was, there is a light within a man. Um, there is light within a man of light, and he lights up the whole world. If he does not shine, he is darkness. We have been made to shine. We have been made to shine bright. And my desire is that we will discover the fact that Jesus came so that we might be light. Amy, Karen, you guys can come up. Um, and my prayer is that we will discover that we get to be the light, not just know of the light, not just speak of the light. We get to be the light ourselves. Jesus ends his introduction of Jesus to us in, um, in John chapter one, and he ends it with these words. He says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And when John writes these words, I believe that what he's speaking of is exactly what he's been longing for and what everybody's been waiting for in the darkness of this tunnel as they were waiting for the light at the end of the tunnel, the hope that would come in Christ. And he says, that the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. And I am reminded of the words of the prophet Isaiah that years before wrote down and said, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. May we arise and shine for our light has come. And not only has our light come, but our light has come so that we might be the light. May you see the light. May you be the light. May the light dwell in you and give light to all those that you interact with. May you shine bright this Christmas. May 2022 be an incredible year, not because of the circumstances around you, but because of the light within you. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that we get to 
not only speak of the light today, Lord, we get to not only speak about who you are and speak about the fact that you came, but Lord, thank you that we get to know you as the light. And Lord, so my prayer is today that everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord, would not only become aware of the fact that Christmas is about the breaking of the dawn, the coming of the Christ, God himself in the flesh, presence on earth, Emmanuel, God with us, that would never change again. Emmanuel, God with us, that would stay with us forever and ever. But God, I pray that we would not only know it through our heads, but God, my prayer is that something would happen in our spirit, Lord God, like what happened to John the Baptist in the womb when he just leapt knowing that this was there. God, my prayer is that the dreams, the, the passions, the, the, the things that are in our hearts, God, that's become dormant or, or maybe dead. Lord, I pray that this Christmas, something would leap up again. Something would respond to the coming of the light, to the coming of the dawn, to the arrival of Jesus. Lord, my prayer is that we will be stirred in our hearts, Lord, excited to not only partake of Christmas and lights and beautiful things and, 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 and presents and all of that. But Lord, I pray that we will be ignited to be the light that you've made us to be. I pray that in the name of the one that has come to be with us forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.